Hi, what's up everyone? Thank you for spending a little bit of your time with me today. And if this is your first time here, thank you, welcome, and please subscribe if you haven't done so already. So today I came across a very interesting math problem from JEE Advanced, which is an entrance exam for university in India. I'd like to show the problem to you as long as my solution to it. So let's get into it. All right, and here's the question. So we have the limit as n go infinity of a quotient. The top is a bunch of cube root. At the bottom we have n to the 7 over 3 and a bunch of like 1 over something square equal to 54. And we ask what a make this equation true? And we have multiple choices a, b, c, d. And the thing is there can be more than one answers. We have to pick all possible correct answers. And if you find this problem interesting, Pause the video here, give it a try, think of what you would do if you were to solve this problem. And if you're ready, here we go. So look at this problem, mm, what should we do? Basically limit of quotient of sum, right? So the way not to do is try to simplify the sum in closed form and try to take a limit of the closed form because it's not always easy to find a closed form of sum of n terms. So when you see something like this, when you see limit of sum of n term, think of Riemann sum, convert this into integral. So instead of simplify the sum, we will simplify the term by taking a limit right away convert the sum into integral and then we compute integral. With that in mind, let's go over what Riemann sum looks like. Alright, so what is Riemann sum? Riemann sum is when you have f of k over n when k ranges from 1 to n, right? So it's going to be 1 over n, 2 over n, 3 over n, 4 over n, all the way to n over n. And then the whole thing you multiply by 1 over n. So if you have something like this, then you take n to infinity then that would be precisely the same as integration of fx dx from 0 to 1. Right, so with that in mind, let's convert all the sum into integral. So keep in mind that we want to see the same pattern, where inside is 1 over n, 2 over n, 3 over n, so on and so forth. So look at the problem and see the numerator. We don't have 1 over n, 2 over n, 3 over n. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way to n in cube root. So in order to make that into 1 over n, 2 over n, we divide everything on top by cube root of n. So the bottom has kind of similar problem, but it's a little trickier to fix. So let's focus on the top first. So on top, if we divide cube root of n on top, then we have precisely what we want. We have cube root of 1 over n, cube root of 2 over n, cube root of 3 over n, all the way to cube root of n over n. To get that 1 over cube root of n, we take that 1 over cube root of n from n to the 7 over 3. So it's left with n to the 6 over 3, which is n squared. And that n squared is the thing that we use to fix the bottom. So we're going to multiply n squared through. So it looks like this. So from n squared in the numerator, we change it into 1 over n squared in the denominator. And after some simplification, we have a plus 1 over n squared, a plus 2 over n squared, a plus 3 over n squared, so on and so forth, which match what we want in terms of Riemann sum precisely. And so far, what we have is this. Okay, so um, if you recall uh, formula for Riemann sum, um, this is not Riemann sum yet because we need 1 over n as well, but that's easy fix because we have the sum on top and bottom, so we can just multiply 1 over n on top and bottom and we match it precisely. Then take limit, the top will be integration from 0 to 1, cube root of x dx, the bottom will be integration from 0 to 1, 1 over a plus x squared dx. All right, and after this, it's pretty straightforward if you know calculus. Antiderivative of cube root of x become x to the 4 over 3, multiply by 3 over 4, you plug in 0 and 1, 1 will make it 1, 0 will make it 0, so we just get 3 over 4. The bottom antiderivative of 1 over a plus x squared will become minus 1 plus a over x. Um, plug in 0 and 1, you get 1 over a plus 1 minus 1 over a. And everything you have minus sign in front. So at the end of the day, you set that whole thing equal to 54. And after a little bit of simplification, you have 1 over 72 equal to 1 over a times a plus 1. And at this point, if you want to be super mathematically correct, you can cross multiply, move everything to one side, solve quadratic equation, and you get the answer. But in an exam situation, it is enough to just guess and check. So you know in quadratic equations, there will be two answers. So if you can find those two answers, then you're done. So what you want at the end is a times a plus 1 equals to 72. So you ask yourself, what are two consecutive numbers that multiply equal to 72? Right? So 72 is basically 8 times 9. 
right? So a is one possible answer. And with that, minus a times minus 9 is also 72. So a could be minus 9, so a plus 1 is minus 8. So answers are A and D. All right, that's it for today. I hope this question is thought-provoking and has been fun for you. And if you have a suggestion of what problem we should talk about, leave it in the comment section down below. And if you haven't subscribed already, please do so. But for today, thank you for watching. My name is Kuang and you're watching N2K. Bye.